Well, hello everyone. I believe you can hear me and see me now. So allow me to welcome you back to the New Directions East Asia 2021. As you can see in the title, a review of brushback research in Japan. This session will shed some light on the growing interest of washback research in this country, thanks to its government's recommendation of using standardized for skill tests of English proficiencies for university admissions. And so I am delighted to be joined by Tatsuro Tahara. He is a PhD student at Was uh, Waseda University in Japan. And so before I hand over to Tatsuro, allow me to remind you that, um, a quick reminder that all your questions and comments are very welcome in the chat box. And our speakers will try to address them all in the 10 minutes Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Now over to you, Tashiro. Please start by sharing your screen. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yes. And thank you very much for the kind introduction. Today, Tatsuro Tahara, the second presenter, will give a presentation. Uh, the concept we will cover today is the washback, washback, the effect of tests on teaching and learning. So similar terms are used in related fields. The term washback is used in applied linguistics, focusing on language teaching and learning. The impact it uses in educational policy, focusing on micro and macro context. On the term consequences, it uses in education measurement, focusing on the assessment. The washback theories have shown that tests do not affect teaching or learning directly. There are mediating factors between them, such as importance and difficulty of the test and resources like materials, time, and people. Then, washback research in language education aims to describe, explain, and ultimately predict the impact of tests on teaching and learning in educational context. Washback is one of the most critical concepts in language assessment. As Shane et al. said, no area of language assessment research in the past 20 years has received, received a greater increase in attention the washback research. Washback research related to Japan was conducted, conducted in a few times. There are reviews. First, Chen, San, and Ma reviewed empirical washback studies conducted all over the world. Second, I replicated his study and identified empirical washback studies conducted in Japan. Third, Alan and I myself provide a thorough overview of empirical washback research, focusing on tests used in the Japanese context. There are some differences among the three studies. Uh, Chen et al. review international databases, whereas the other two focusing on the Japanese context, and the studies are written both in English and Japanese. Also, Chen et al adopted the research framework of the Keynes categories, and Tahara and Alain Tahara added an analytical framework of their own. Keynes framework is the argument-based validation framework. Uh, this washback study used its framework of categories of consequences. However, using Keynes category had difficulties in categorizing the washback studies. For example, and some articles are overlapped between category one, intended outcome realized, and category three, systemic effects in education. And in our study, all studies can fall into the third category. As Shane et al. said, these categories are neither mutually exclusive nor exhaustive. Therefore, we use the analytic framework to analyze specific features of previous studies. These major categories and features include the publication type, type of test, context and participants, methodologies, aspect, 
aspects of washback investigated and consequences. This is a summary table of our review, and this is in our paper in detail. Here's an explanation of a summary of the findings. The findings are based on our research paper, Allen and Tahara in press. About a year, washback research shows considerable growth in Japan from the 19th to 2010s. About the language, interestingly, no studies are written in English. This highlights the outward looking nature of washback researchers. Regarding the type of publication, research was identified in the format of one book chapter, three PhD thesis, and four monographs by testing agency, and 24 journal articles. The journal articles include three international journals, four regional journal articles, nine local journal articles published by the organization in Japan, and eight Japanese university bulletins. For test purposes, most studies focus on tests primarily for admission purposes, including university entrance exam, UEEs, the national center test, the national center test, a listening component, NCTL, and the test of English for academic purposes, TIP, administered by the Aiken Foundation of Japan. NCT, the national center test for university admission, is a standardized test used mainly by public and some private university in Japan. The NCTL was introduced in 2006 to create positive washback on the learning and teaching of listening within formal school education. On the other hand, other studies focusing on tests used for other purposes. These studies focus on some aspect of assessment, such as curricular component, motivation to study, and classroom assessment. Regarding skills focus, uh, there has been increased interest in washback from four skills tests, reflecting the heated discussions on introducing commercial four skills tests in university admission tests in Japan. The next, the NCTL attracted the second most attention by researchers. Regard, regarding the test specificity, this is the most important findings in our study. Many of the studies dealing with UEEs varies in terms, in terms of whether or not, or to what degree, the exam being discussed as specified from specified, partially specified to unspecified. This issue of how tests are specified concerns the researcher, the participants, and the reader. In only, two, only three studies, the UEE in question are clearly specified. For example, Allen focused on both the NCT and the general root entrance exam for University of Tokyo. Also, Sato focus on the TIP and Sophia University's general root entrance exam. In this case, the test takers, the researchers, and readers are all aware of the UEEs involved in these cases. This transparency allows the researchers to make explicit claims about the connection between specific test features and the washback effect. It also allows the reader to access the test information to verify and replicate the research. In these cases, washback is a test, the effect of, uh, in this case, washback is the effect of a specified test on teaching and learning. In other studies, the specific UEEs are partially specified. For instance, Watanabe 2019 focused on the general root exam or recommendation root exam of the College B in the rural area in Japan. The exam consisted of vocabulary, grammar, reading, and translation of Japanese into English question. This is a specific exam, but not available to reader. Also, Watanabe 2096 mentioned the exam of one of the most popular private universities located in the Tokyo area. And the English, sec English section of national university exam with particular emphasis on reading skills. 
the first exam is specific but not available to reader. In contrast, the second case is an unspecified exam, multiple exam, that is a type of a type of exam. Therefore, the investigated washback effect is derived from some specific type of UEE rather than a specific UEEs. In these cases, washback is the effect of a type of a test on teaching and learning. In many other studies, the UEEs are unspecified. These tests are known to the test taker, teachers, participants, perhaps the re researcher, but they are not documented in detail. In all, in all of these cases, although participants may have a specific exam in mind when they, when they reported on their learning or teaching experiences, the exam themselves or not explicit, explicit, explicitly identified in the study. So it is difficult to verify the connection between tests and effect. It can be said that other research has targeted UEE in general. That is a generic UEE that exists in the mind of the participants. For example, Green investigated teacher and learners views on the influence of UEEs on their English teaching and learning. One example of a six point agreement item is, in general, do you think that the kind of test item using university English entrance exam has an influence on high school English classes in Japan? Also, Bailey found that teachers believe that the influence of unspecified UEEs on the pedagogy was greater than that of the max curriculum. He asked questions regarding the NCT specific one and other in-house UEE generic in his study. In these cases, washback is the effect of a generic type of a test on teaching and learning. This test specificity or non-specificity issue is of central concern in washback research in Japan. And um, this derives from many UEEs administered by each university that affects stakeholder be stakeholders' beliefs about the test, such as subjective or vague idea of UEE content, skills, formats, and grading criteria. The results support the previous washback studies showing the importance of the perception versus actual test. Moreover, it is difficult to demonstrate washback from a specific exam. UEEs and the middleman facilitate the test specificity issue. In Japan, big Yobiko preparatory schools and Juku cram school created mock, mock tests that many high school students take. This test, con this test content reflect test question from in-house tests by famous university. That is, washback from multiple exam on teaching in schools is mediated or amplified by Yobiko Ojiku, the shadow education. Regarding the context of education, most research is connected with mainstream education with only few studies exclusively focusing on shadow education, despite its importance in Japan. As to the level of education, most studies involve university participants. As to participants, learners have been studied the most. Moreover, as to the test taker perspective of the studies investig investigating washback to learners, most studies ask learners to recall the, exper recall the experiences retrospectively. The sample size range from two teacher participants to 50,000 727 learner perspective with a median of 102 participants. About the data collection, most studies use multiple methods for triangulation. The most often utilized method is survey data and interviews have also been used ex extensively followed by test data, observation and document analysis. And half of the studies collected rich qualitative data such as surveys plus interviews. In research design, there are three studies 
before and after or within participant sequential designs. These studies dealt with baseline data as is recommended in washback research. For instance, in Ale and Nagatomo, senior high school students completed a survey and interview. This data was used as a baseline data and was compared to a second survey and interview after taking a new test, tip test. Another type of research design was a busy participant design. For example, Watanabe included multiple teachers teaching for multiple tests that differ in content. He hypothesized that if a test creates washback, it should affect teachers similarly. And finding, finding is that teacher factors mediate washback. Also, Kowata investigated various teachers' perception of tests. The finding, finding is that teachers vary in the interpretations of grading criteria. Um, okay. Furthermore, many between participant design have also been used. In this design, researchers have contrasted the behaviors and attitude of learners who differ according to the tests they took to enter universities. For example, Watanabe compared the strategy used depending on whether participant had taken the recommendation-based or general route exam. However, Watanabe also cautioned that the difference, differences in strategy use might be due to factors other than tests, such as motivation, language proficiency, and their learning experiences. This indicates a common drawback of between participant design. About the aspect of washback, there are no specific features for learning and teaching between content, method, perception, and outcomes. Regarding the evidence of washback, studies that demonstrate strong evidence of washback typically include multiple sources, multiple, multiple methods of data collection, and explanations for why things happen or didn't happen. On the other hand, studies are study that failed to provide washback evidence or provided only very weak evidence, typically provided very restric restricted data sets, a limited sample size, but no interviews or open responses to discover why things happen or didn't happen. Based on our review, uh, several conclusions can be drawn and recommendations that are made for future washback research in Japan. First, research is required into the use of four skills tests on washback generated in different micro contexts, particularly at the high school level, the senior high school level. That is because the intended outcome of the university entrance exam reform in Japan and the use of the four skill tests in this context is to generate, generate positive washback effect in education in Japan. It, it is also recommended that future research focuses on the washback of specific tests where possible. As shown in our review, due to the Japanese custom of developing and using in-house UEEs, research have, researchers have tended to focus on more general rather than specific washback effect. Besides, it is recommended that studies more thoroughly consider the role of shadow education, like Yobiko in Yobiko, Juku, and Eikaiwa Gakko, or English conversation schools in Japan. Furthermore, the use of the qualitative data is crucial, such as interviews, narrative journals, or open-ended survey to support qualitative survey and test data. Studies would also benefit from ethnographic study and more longitudinal rather than one-shot data collection. Particularly, the baseline data were needed for, needed for the before and after within participant sequential design, as I, as I explained. Finally, we believe that future research needs to be firmly grounded in washback theory 
as shown by the relevant literature and theoretical model in the previous studies. As recommended by Watanabe, large-scale tests into the large-scale tests into test impact may also benefit from innovation theory and motivation theories. By referring to the, this theoretical model or approach, it is possible to connect local context-specific invest context-specific investigation to the broader field of washback research and support our growing understanding of washback in language education. Thank you very much for listening. Please email us for pre-publication draft and references. Thank you, Tashiro. That is a very comprehensive review, I must say. <laughs> we, we obviously have a lot to, to go through and um, I'm sure our audience uh, will love to, to take more into on the recommendation you gave. That's a lot of it. Um, we actually have a few comments and observations, very interesting from the, gap, um, from the audience. Um, so I think I'm going to have a quick um, run with you, you don't mind, just a few, um, just to let us know your talk um, regarding to our audience observation. Um, okay, well, um, Ricky Chetfrey Chet um, seemed to have very good observation regarding to compare between China and Japan, saying that the Yobiku Yuku seemed to be similar to the Shadow Education Training School. Uh, in China, that seemed to call Peng Sun Su Sao, if you have heard of it. So do you think that's, that is that observation accurate? Um, what do you think? And I think, let me allow, allow me to go further um, into Rick, Ricky's observation. He also suggests that China training school had been, um, been impacted by a stricter government regulation, um, banning them from offering tuition, commercial tuition related to their national curriculum. And he wondering if Japan's policy maker, Japan's government also um, have done any regulation at all uh, in this shadow education sector? Yeah, it, in traditionally, Yobiko Juku is a, it, Yobiko Juku is a main, it's, this is shadow education, but many uh, test takers go to, go to Yobiko and Juku as no, there's no specific restriction in Japan. And, and even, even the general high school student go to school in every, day, every weekday, they also go to the Yobiko and Juku for the test preparation. And it is natural to think that if the four skill tests are uh, introduced. They also, the another Yobiko and Juku started the new courses in like the, particularly the writing and speaking is a very new, new component in Japan as a university admission test. And there are also another private sector that start to uh, teach speaking line, like the online English conversation courses. So, but, I I'm not sure about the Chinese cases, but I, I think it, it is, so I think it seems that there will be no restriction to the Yobiko shadow education high school. So, but the, what the research, research have to do is avoid to, so avoid denying, just start to, look at the, what uh, the shadow education sector will do. Even, the, even these 20 or 30 years of washback studies, uh, the very few studies focus on the shadow education despite its importance. So the more and more research will be needed for especially the speaking test, the new test. Is it okay? <laughs> so. Don't worry. No, that's 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 quite some details. Yeah. Um, thank you, Tatsuro. Um, I'm sure a country and government regulations can be complicated, so we might not have time to dig uh, too deep into that. But um, uh, but this is a very good question that I don't think we want to miss. Um, 
um, and actually you had mentioned it, so um, I will not push you to, to, to repeat it itself, but you did mention, so that's that's very good. And the question was actually about uh, how data could be collected for oh. longitudinal studies, and you did yeah, answer it. Yeah, that's important. It seems question. to be a my reader to us all. <laughs> yeah, as I explained, then so in the in the good studies, they need to focus on the before and after data, like the pre and post test test data, or other other tests that uh, assess English proficiency before and after some introduction or test, and also. It is also it is also needed that important that they said uh, uh, between participant design the the control group and experimental group so that the, in, they compare and also the longitudinal in the longitudinal data the how for example the one group is for the new taking the new test and other groups are the, taking the traditional in-house test, and they, then we can compare in the in the longitudinal studies, and in the international database, there there are a few studies that compare the over the three years, in the three years, and the before introduction and while introduction and after introduction, uh, like if if the if we researcher would like to hypothesize that speaking, introducing speaking tests is beneficial, then we need to set design like between participant design and some group taking speaking and others, uh, the another group down, the other group down. And then they survey longitudinal data as a, first is the test data. But of course, other data such as motivations or learners Learns perception or attitude during the question can be uh, needed. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we have only three more minutes, uh, but allow me to give uh, to give the chance to one more participant, Johanna. I have one last question to you. Well, first of all, she thanks for this substantial review, as I totally agree. Uh, and the question is, are you planning to undertake washback research yourself? Um, if so, have you begun your plans? Yeah, actually I wanted to do, but but there, due to the heated discussion in Japanese cases, the, the introducing new commercial for skaters has been stopped for a while. Uh, if, if they start again, it will start in, three or four years later. In that case, I like to, for example, I like to get uh, as a, get data, like the, as a baseline data, as I explained before introducing new tests. Then uh, after five or, or 10 years later, we need to get data. We need to the data as a post, post review and and as this is very longitudinal, if I do more about this, like as I mentioned, I need so the researchers need to focus on one specific test, for example, the tip test or IELTS test, or and if they if the one specific test were introduced, so what the research need to observe for long time. Mm -hmm. not, not only the one shot one shot observation, but but the longitudinal test data or motivation or a long term. Yeah. So I so and doc, I I I know that the the a professor Mot Motran observed the longitudinal qualitative studies. So this is it's one of the way to oh yeah yeah. Thank you, Tatsuro. Well, um, yeah, you know, Johanna. <laughs> and um, well, uh, I think on that very positive note about the future research, um, I'm afraid that we run out of time for now, but we thanked our speaker, Tatsuro, again. Thank you. That's just an excellent review. 
um, we thank our participation for your um, excellent questions. Please leave us some feedback on these particular sections by answering the two short questions in the survey tab next to the chat box. And we hope you continue to enjoy the rest of the conference today. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much.